Hey gang, how you doing? All right, I figured it out. What's up? Adam here. I'm totally psyched to be live for you. And I'm here to help you with, with anything I possibly can. Uh, my plan is to, uh, I don't have a guitar stand here, hold on. My plan is to spend something uh, between uh, 40 minutes and up to an hour. I don't want to go too long so that if anybody wants to watch the uh, the playback, it, it won't be too long a video. And I, I plan on doing this some more. So uh, I see your messages coming in. Uh, we've been chatting for a few minutes. So go ahead and uh, ask away. I can't promise I'll get to everybody's question, but I'm going to do, do my very best. All right. We've got Mito here. He's one of my uh, Study with Adam members. Hey, Mito. Okay, he's going to check my German. Ich habe mein B1 Prüfung geschafft in Österreich. So now you have an idea. I actually uh, I got an official uh, visa because I'm currently living in Austria. So, uh, and I passed a very basic language test. Okay, Jason. You've been playing guitar for about a year, but you're trying to start finger style. What would be a great way to start? Okay, I'm really, the questions are going by real fast, but I'm gonna to try to answer you. I would say, take some basic chords. If you're trying to play finger style, I'll give you a little lesson here. Take some basic chords, right? G chord, and, and try to find a comfortable position for your hand and just try to, Maybe with the three fingers on the top strings here, see if you can pluck the strings and see if you can play some bass notes with your thumb. Can everybody hear the guitar okay? Just just type me a yes because I, I can put it through an amp if, if you like. Can you hear it? Can you hear it okay? Okay. Hey, Ruggiero, I see you. Now let me try something. Uh, hang on. Oops. I've got this wireless uh, line six thing. I'm going to plug it in and it's going to go to my amp. Hang on. Stand by everybody. Uh, as far as guitar sound now, tell me, is this better? Or is this or is this muddier? Can you hear the guitar okay? Okay, everybody said yes. How, how does that sound? Much better, okay, great. Muddy. I did it, I did it just to add a little uh, volume through an amp. I know it's not recording studio quality, but it's just so you can hear it. Uh, it's gonna add a little bit more room sound. So anyhow, um, I'm answering the question about getting started with finger style. What I would suggest is just taking a chord progression and just try to try to play some finger picking patterns so that your right hand gets accustomed to the strings. Now, I saw uh, Marcel. Okay, it's a little quiet, Paul. Hang on, I'm gonna crank it up a little bit and then I'll be there. Okay, I just made it a little bit louder. If it really sucks, just tell me. Okay, now it's a little bit louder. Okay. Okay, hey Nate, how you doing? Ooh, Nate, it's muddy, but it's audible. Ooh, lots of questions coming in. Let me try to let me try to back up here and see see uh, what's happening. Hey, Paul, how you doing? We have another study with Adam member Paul here. When am I going to tour the Pacific Northwest? I'd love to come through there. My brother lives in Oregon. Okay, uh, so hopefully I'll visit him and 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 make it through there. I think he's in Portland. Hey, Giuseppe. Okay, Luke, sweet Georgia Brown. 
Sweet Georgia Brown. You know, that was an old piece. Uh, Luke Everett asked about Sweet Georgia Brown. And I just, you know, I'm not a thumb picker. I, I know it sounds crazy. I, I was working on it and working on it and working on it. And uh, I've kind of stopped with the thumb pick. But that arrangement was actually inspired by, uh, if you look up Doyle Dykes, and if you look for a song that he plays called Me and Jesus and My Old Guitar, where he's like, he's a preacher and he's in church and he does this amazing finger picking stuff. It's so tasty. And I was kind of inspired by all the riffs that he did on that. But I've kind of, um, I've stopped uh, using the thumb pick and I'm kind of just in my own more jazz and R&B bag that was something that I really worked hard on for a long time and I just found that I could never really hit the musical bottom that I wanted to hit with it. Okay. I'm going to keep looking. I'm going to keep looking. Marcel, I was going to answer you. Um do you do I use nails or plastics? And this might interest everybody. Okay. I've got nothing. No nails. I mean, very all, like, okay, there's a little bit there, but basically I am playing with the flesh of my fingers. And it's, it's simply because uh, I've seen so many guitarists who either break nails or have to put fake nails on. And, you know, actually, well, there's a level of, I don't want to deal with any of that because I did it when I was 16 years old. I was a classical guitarist and I actually thought more about fixing my fingernails than playing the guitar because I'm, I'm kind of an obsessive guy. You know, I like things to, to be just perfect. And so it's a combination of things. One, that was a total drag for me. And two, when I got to fingerstyle, I was checking out Doyle Dykes and Tommy Emmanuel. And I kind of liked the musical message from Tommy even more than Doyle Dykes. I mean, they're both awesome, but I mean, we all know Tommy's just Tommy's Tommy. And I said, wow, he's doing it with no fingernails. I would have never thought that was possible. So I kind of followed that model of doing a steel string. I ended up with a Maiden after trying a couple different brands. And I'm also a fan of Wes Montgomery. Now, I don't know if you guys have checked out Wes Montgomery, but he played with his thumb on a jazz archtop guitar. And I find that his sound, uh, I, I love him more than any other jazz guitar player. He's, he's kind of my number one all-time guitar player of in any genre. And so there's a sort of an emotional thing that is evoked, I feel, uh, at least when I hear the sound of a flesh on on a string. And of course you can't play fast, you can't you can't play, well Tommy can play fast, but you, you can't play like super duper fast scales or like what somebody would play with a pick. But in terms of punch and sweetness, I like the sound. So I have my action set pretty low and I really work. I really work on uh, my tone and I do lately. I've been doing some almost like classical exercises like this. Right. And as far as the thumb, there's nothing here because I, I like the feeling of like a, a jazz bass. So if I'm going like Misty, I'll go, oops, everybody. This line six thing keeps dying. So you know what? Stand by, I'm gonna get a real patch chord. Hold on. Hang on, don't go anywhere. Sorry, sorry for the tech glitch. Hang on, stand by. Hold on. 
Patch cord, patch cord's coming. Hang on. I thought I'd do it with the line six thing, but it's not working. Okay, good old, good old technology, real patch cord. So about the nails and the picks and, and all that, I've, I've thought a lot about this. And I find that when I'm like really turned up loud, that kind of jazz bass feel, I can't really get that with a thumb pick because to get a warm sound, you have to, you have to mute with the side of your hand. And that's great for a country music feel, but it's not good for the kind of feel that, that I try to achieve. So for example, um, uh, uh, like this, watch. So, so if you could hear it here in the room with the amp, there's this kind of boom, 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 with the thumb that I, I kind of like. So Marcel, I hope, I hope that answers your question. Hey, Matthew, we got another study with Adam. What's happening? Matthew Olfant. Oh, aux enfants. Okay, cool, cool. Nate, what's up? Randy Freeman's in the house. Hey, Randy, how you doing? Hey everybody, all right. Now I'm looking at questions. I'm looking at your questions. Okay, I'm looking at Esther and she says, Adam, can you give me three of your top tips for locking into the groove with a song? My metronome is really starting to give me the, ooh, bad word, bad language, Esther. I don't know if I can answer you if you're using language like that. Um, sure, I will. I will show you three of my top tips for locking the groove to a song. And uh, my, my students who are, who are close to me, they, they know about this stuff. So I hope this doesn't bore you, but I'll give you a little live demo. Okay. So one of the things I do when I practice and, and when I teach my students, uh, this is, this is a Remo drum and I practice a certain rhythm on the drum to help lock my lock my rhythm down, okay? And this was taught to me from my teacher, and he learned it from Dizzy Gillespie, and it's a little too complicated to uh, teach the whole thing here, but it's a 12-8 African rhythm. So when I teach this in workshops, you know, you could, you could start just by going one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. And so I'll do these rhythms where I go one two three four five six 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 one two three and then there's a lot of different ways you can count this. So watch what I can do. I can go one two three one two three one two three one two three one chicka 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 chicka. So that's one dimension. Another one is one two three. Isn't she lovely? Isn't she wonderful? So that's like one, two, three, four, five, six, 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 one, two, three, 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 four, one, two, three, four. And I'll practice that until the drum starts getting like a glowing kind of sound and until it starts getting a momentum. And bouncing. And so in effect, what's happening is I'm tuning myself inside. I'm getting my insides grooving. I'm getting my touch, my time, and, and all that coordinated. And that has nothing to do with the metronome. And I've had kind of heated discussions with people about metronomes, but metronomes are useful, but time is different from groove. Like what that exercise gives me is a lot more than if I just had a thing clicking, going click, 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 which is perfect time. A computer could do that, but to get ooh, but you get the bang, but you get the bang, but you get the bang, bang. And then 
so when I get that feeling in my hands from from doing the drum, when I do when I do like "Isn't She Lovely" or like what I did in my last uh, instruction video. That is um, rhythmically, that is fully informed uh, by playing African rhythm on a hand drum. So I suggest, uh, it's like I said, I, I just went through it really fast. There's a little bit more involved that happens to be on studywithadam.com. There's a whole thing called improve your groove over there. But that's one of the secrets. And, you know, Tommy, his groove is awesome, but look, he plays the drums too. You know, you've heard him jam out on, on the guitar. And there's another guy, Petteri Serioli. He's amazing. And so uh, playing the drums or a drum and getting your percussive thing together will really inform you about how you hit strings and pluck. Okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna try to scroll back and, and look through some more questions. I, ho I hope I answered your question, Esther. Thank you so much. Hitoko's here. Hey, how you doing, Hitoko? Glad to see you. Fifteenth fret. You want to thank me for giving back to the guitar community? Well, gosh, well, thank you. I'm I'm doing my best. You know, I I, I do my best. Um, it's interesting that you say that because. You know, it, learning, performing, um, giving lessons, teaching people. There's something about teaching and giving back that it makes the circle complete. You know, of course, we all want to do gigs and get out there and be successful. But, um, well, at least I do. I guess, I guess, I guess some of us do. But you know, then to sort of hold on to that and try to stop the natural flow and accumulate uh, is not what it's about. It's then about pouring the wisdom or whatever gifts have been given to me, like this rhythmic thing or, or guitar things I figured out. It's about giving that back. And then I feel like a normal human being when I do that. So uh, thank you. And I'm, I'm delighted to be here. Shane Hennessy's in the house, man. I thought we were going to do a gig together, Shane. What's what's going on? Hello from the Boston airport. You're running to your flight. All right, man. Stay safe. Don't get on any of those Boeing 737s. All right. Shane Wilson. Shane will, uh, excuse me, Sadie Wilson. My eyes are failing me. Should I only focus on finger picking or finger picking and flat picking? Sadie, that's a great question. Um, you know, I'm going to say something. Uh, I'm going to go back on, on my word to Esther. I'm going to use some foul language. There's this, uh, there's this personal development guy. You might have heard of him named Tony Robbins. And he says, the minute you tell yourself you should do something, you end up shooting all over yourself. Of course, that's a play on words, but there are no shoulds. And let me tell you, because I've been there, what you should focus on is the, the music that lights up your heart. And that's going to be totally different from everybody else. OK, and don't be afraid to be different. I'm, I'm not sure what kind of music you are hardwired with and what you love. But go for that. And then if the best way to express that is with your fingers, do it with your fingers. If the best way to express that is with a flat pick, do it with a flat pick. Could be that, that one song uh, requires one tool and one song requires another. I'll give you an example, though, a personal example. I have a, a flat picking song that I used to play a lot called Stormwind. It's a super fast, you know, kind of show off big, loud, almost like, you know, ACDC on, on acoustic guitar. Very much inspired by a guitarist by the name of Steve Morse. And, you know, it was sort of this anomaly piece that I felt I should play because I should do something fast and big and loud. 
And the truth of it was, I was like, it's not turning me on. What turns me on is grooving. Like, isn't she lovely and superstition and, and Beatles and the songs that I play. I just stopped doing it because it was exactly the kind of thing you're talking about. It was like, oh, I should do this. And that's not what music's about. Go listen to your heart, go with where your musical instinct guides you, and then allow the right tool to present itself for that music. All right, let's see. Brian, what's happening? Brian DeFusco is in the house. How do I stay inspired? Staying inspired. That comes and goes. I'll, I'll be the first to admit it. You know, maybe if I didn't eat right, if I ate a lot of sweets, if I didn't sleep right, if I haven't been exercising, I'm not inspired. If I've been playing too much of the same old stuff, uh, I kind of lose my inspiration. But, you know, sometimes you don't get inspired before you start working on something. Sometimes you have to just start working and then it gets a momentum and then you start to feel inspired once you've started working. So for me, uh, there, there are about, I'd say about half the days I wake up not particularly inspired. And so I say, well, I'm gonna put my hands on this guitar. I'm just gonna put it in my hands. I'm gonna see what happens. It's like, I just put the time in. I just keep putting the time in. I say, wow, let me check out what's happening on superstition. Let me work on a new thing. Let me run in my life from the Beatles. And I sometimes if I don't know what to do, I just run repertoire and I eyeball it. And I, I might not be inspired, okay? But I keep going. I keep working and I, I keep the goal in mind. So being goal oriented is important. Maybe, maybe we'll talk more about this. Okay, Saziz, please tell something about jazz harmony. Ooh, man, the lessons. I feel like Nate had a question here. Um, yes, I, I went I went past you, Nate. I don't know if you've asked more than one question. I'm looking at Nate Breidenbaugh's question. My question is this. Confidence has always been an issue for me. I push myself way too hard, and I don't want to burn out. Any advice on changing mindset? I want to be free to enjoy my music. All right, everybody, this is really important, and I'd like to spend some time on Nate's question because I've had my own ups and downs in my life. Um, I'm not going to BS you. I'm going to be really honest. And some of you who are my students uh, and have a close relationship with me, I've, I've been open with you. I've had issues with confidence. I was... Last year, I was halfway on the way to a burnout. It was very serious. I was like kind of out of it. Um, I pushed myself way too hard, like Nate. And so uh, I actually, I went to therapy and I just went to a few sessions. I, I, I should probably keep it up, but I, I had to go to some therapy. I, I had to go talk to somebody to kind of work things out. I was still running study with Adam. Um, I was still doing some gigs, but I was feeling maybe I want to stop performing. That was, it was like a really, um, a point that was very hard for me. And so I actually went, you, you'll all really laugh. I went to a therapy appointment. And so the guy says, well, you know, what's going on? And I put a thumb pick on the table. I put a flat pick on the table and I stuck my thumb out. Thumb out. And I said, I'm going crazy. I can't decide what I'm supposed to be using. Okay. I mean, I had to go to like a therapy appointment to like figure this out. And um, I'll try to save you uh, the dough. I I'll just tell you the assignment that he gave me. He said, uh, can you have one thing is, can you have a conversation with your emotional self? Meaning like there's part of you that's the manager. And then there's part of you that is the emotional person. And that manager has to really look out for the emotional person. And you can have a conversation with yourself like, hey, Adam, how you doing? 
And then I go, well, I'm, I'm all right. You know, like my plan feels okay these days. So I go, wow, that's great. And what happens is you trick your brain into not feeling alone and isolated. Because it's one thing to be up against difficulty, but it's another thing to feel alone and isolated and then have the difficulty as well. Okay. So, I mean, I'm trying to explain it in 30 seconds, but it was a really useful technique. And the other thing that uh, he told me, he said, no guitar playing is allowed unless you want to. There's no pushing yourself. There's no being hard on yourself. He says, just put it aside for a couple of days and wait until you want to have that fun feeling and go back. Okay. And what I also would like to tell all of you uh, and, and warn you against um, or, or have not warn you against, but have you be on a lookout for it is it's, so easy to look at YouTube and look at guys like me or other people. And then it's automatic. It's this social media thing. It's this automatic thing where you can get into a comparison game where, you, you know, even just scrolling on a Facebook feed, it, it comes to you really quick and you feel, Oh man, this guy has a gig and these guys are all so happy playing the guitar and I'm really struggling. Well, guess what? Everybody's struggling. We all work hard at our craft and for advertising, we all just, we all show the happy face. So it's, you know, there could be an element, Nate, I'm speaking to you, but also the others. There, there could be an element of if you're taking too much in on YouTube and Facebook, it's designed to kind of undermine your confidence. So really stay firm and, uh, Stay with your enjoyment of music and be sensitive to what makes you feel good and stick with that. Okay, you'll work and you'll study, but stay with that and be incredibly kind to yourself. I'm kind of I'm kind of back on my game, but it was it was a rough, it was a rough couple of years, you know. So I, I hope I hope that somehow I made sense. And if you ever need to reach out to me, uh, Nate, please feel free to reach out to me. Okay. Let's um, let's keep going. Hey, Andre, how you doing? I'd love to come to Buenos Aires. Rob, can I talk about how I'd go about learning Mas Canada? I You love my rendition. Well, thank you. Hang on, I'm going to get a sip of water. Um, there is... There is a video uh, lesson series for Mas Canada over on Study with Adam. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to give everybody here kind of a, a quick, a really quick arranging lesson, okay? And I'm going to I'm going to show you the basics because my arrangement changes constantly. But there, when I make an arrangement, hey everybody, I'm cut out of the picture. When I make a solo guitar arrangement, there I think of three layers. Okay, there's a melody layer. There's a bass layer. Those are the outer, the outer layers, and those are the most important. And then I just try to grab something in the middle. So I'm always juggling in my mind. There are three parts. Okay, so that's step one. Next, on Mas Canada, I and most of my songs. Here's the groove that I conceive of. It sounds like this. One, two, three, four. Boom, boom, bat, boom, boom, bat, boom, boom, bat, boom, 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 bat, boom, boom, bat, boom, boom, bat, One, two, one, two, three. Oops, volume's down. Hang on. Bat, boom, boom, bat, boom, boom, bat, boom, boom. So that's kind of like with the bass and bass drum is doing, okay? I'm showing you how I put the arrangement together. Now, on a chord, such as an E minor chord, I'll alternate between the root and the fifth on the bass, I'll go. And 
and I'll go bang. So I just sang the melody and played you the bass. That's the concept of how I'm putting it together. The rest is figuring out guitar fingerings that enable me to do that. So if I can, if you can use open strings, that'll make your life easier. So watch. This is just the outer layers now. Okay, got me so far. I just did the bass and the melody. Now, when I do the inner stuff, sometimes I'm plucking like this, and sometimes I'm just dragging a finger and I'm getting the inside of a chord almost the way a bass player would do it. Okay, but I'm getting some kind of notes in the middle so that it doesn't sound like a skeleton. Okay, so watch. And just with the inclusion of some of those middle notes, okay, just with the inclusion of some of those middle notes, it sounds fuller, okay? And it's, it's all based on boo boom, boo boom, boo boom, boo boom. So that has to be the heartbeat of what you're doing. And then you just add the stuff on top. I hope that makes things a little bit clear for you. And uh, of course, that's not all the exact fingerings, but that's the thrust of how I do arrangements, whether it's Beatles, Stevie Wonder, jazz, that's the basic idea. Okay, I see a lot of great questions here. I'm gonna try to get to you all. Matthew, it sounds like a cheap amp. Yeah, it's my, it's my cheap AER. Okay. Roger, Roger DeBeer, he asks, what can he do about being nervous for his first gig? Okay, uh, Roger, I'm going to sh share with you a, a podcast episode of mine where I cover nerves and stage fright and all that stuff. So uh, let me let me look for the uh, episode. Hang on a sec. Overcoming. Here we go. I have a podcast, everybody. By the way, it's called the Fingerstyle Guitar Hangout, and it's on iTunes. And there's even a, a website for it. You can see in the show notes uh, here on YouTube. Hang on. And so I'm going to put the link of the podcast. Uh, episode on nerves and stage fright. You'll see, I just put it up there. It's episode nine. Um, the one thing that you can do is, well, there's, there's so much to talk about. Uh, I would say practice and play a little bit slower than you think you should play. Cause when you're nervous, it's easy to play fast. It's easy to play faster than you should play. And uh, don't think about being a good guitarist. Don't think about playing for guitar players. Think about making the people who are listening happy. Think about touching the people with nice melodies and nice grooves. Don't worry about the guitar. As crazy as that sounds, that will put your head in a, in a different zone, okay? And listen to the podcast because there's there's more details there. Episode nine of the Fingerstyle Guitar Hangout. Let's see. Hey, Aaron Carlino's in the house. Hang on, everybody. Wow, I don't. I hope I get to the uh, to all the questions. Hang on, Paul. Paul asks, uh, "How do I remember my arrangements? Do I use transcribing software?" Actually, no, I don't use transcribing software. 
when I scribble out arrangements, either for workshops or when you see the tabs and the videos on the lessons, uh, that's sort of just a task that I have to do. I, I remember them all, but I practice the same arrangements a lot and I play the same arrangements a lot live. And it's a use it or lose it thing. You know, if I haven't been practicing a certain technique or a certain arrangement for a while, it's like it just vanishes, you know, it evaporates. I've got to, I've got to keep an arrangement alive. Uh, and so when I'm on tour, I'm really on my game uh, because I'm playing the stuff every night. And, you know, you, you make all these little adjustments and I'll even have nights where I go home and I'll say, okay, Adam, make a note. Something fell apart on uh, Fly Me to the Moon and I'll be practicing in the hotel room until two in the morning after the gig to iron that out. So that's tour time is a very intense um, focus time to really craft the pieces and and it's like a garden, you know, it can be perfect one season or, you know, and the next thing you know, there's weeds everywhere and then you got to, you got to tend to it again. Uh, but I don't write them down for myself because um, I know the musical concept and the techniques might change and a couple of voicings might change, but the overall concept pretty much stays. I hope that answers your question, Paul. Herb, is the action set very low? on my guitar and do I use medium strings? Okay, yes, the action is set low. And I'm gonna find an article for you on my website where I have my setup measurements. If you go to adamrafferty.com slash blog, you will find this article. I just pasted a link there. It's my setup measurements. The action's darn low. I make it easy to play and I use 12 gauge strings. Okay, 12 to 53 Martin SP. Okay. Okay, guitar man. My German reading is not so good. Übertragen, I don't I don't I I'm having a little hard time, so I'm going to I'm going to skip past your question. Um, somebody just walked in. Okay. Tim, thank you for the props on Jill's song. I appreciate that. Thank you. Turd Burglar, hey, happy to see you. Glad it's not smell-o-vision here. Okay. Adam, can you explain why people sometimes use a flat pick when they usually use a thumb pick? For example, TE uses a flat pick on the song Angelina. Why don't they just use the thumb pick for everything? You know, I don't know exactly. Uh, I don't use, I barely use a flat pick anymore. But what I can tell you is sometimes there's a sort of a breezy, strummy kind of sound that one can get with a flat pick. It's a little bit more of a metallic edge. And maybe the song was just built like that. I've experimented with my repertoire I had a period where I tried to do it with a flat pick and I found that my hand just turned into a claw. It didn't, didn't work for me. I liked the power in the bass, but it, uh, it didn't stick. It was just too uncomfortable, but it depends on the piece. Totally depends on the piece. All right. Yes, Matthew, learning new things helps inspiration. Audio is gone. Is the audio, uh, I hope everybody can hear me. Check, check, check. Hang on. Can you guys all still hear me? Somebody type a yes if you can still hear me because somebody said the audio has gone. Okay, good. Nate, that might have been on your end. Okay. Let's see. Let me, let me scroll back a little bit here. Okay, 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 hang on. Okay, I'm going to keep going. I'm having fun. I, I hope you're all having a good time. This is this is really cool. Sadie, thank you for the heartfelt response. 
Okay, no, you don't have to divide your focus. You stay with what feels right to you. Uh, I think that's Sharon. I'm not sure. I see um, it looks like Hebrew text. I, I'm sorry, I don't. I can't read Hebrew and pronounce your name. Hello, Adam. I love your freestyle arrangements. Is there a song I really want to learn and I can't find an arrangement? Will you help me make it? I'd have to apologize. I don't have any time to write arrangements for people. I'm already overloaded as it is. But if you want to learn any of my arrangements, I'd be happy to help you learn them. But uh, if you want some tips on how to arrange a song, maybe I could help you out with that. So you'd still have to do the work, but I could give you a little bit of guidance, okay? William von Zangenberg. I have, this is, this is gonna be good. Been wondering this for a while. How would you go about bringing a guitar amplifier on an airplane? I just flew to Florida. Okay. And I use an AER. The company is AER. I use a compact 60 amp. Everybody, you're going to love this. So listen up, listen up, listen up. Now it's not a big amp. Okay. Usually I ask people, Hey, do you have an AER there that I can use? And then I go the DI out and I go into the house PA system. Um, they didn't have an AER there, or at least I didn't think they did. And there is a company called Bougera. It's either Bourgera, B-U-R-G-E-R-A, or B-U-G-E-R-A. Okay, let me see, Bougera uh, 60. I'm not sure if it's Bourgera. No, it's Bougera, B-U-G-E-R-A. And they make an amp called the AC60, which is identical from what I could tell to an AER. And so I just, and it's like 250 bucks. So that's about a quarter of the cost of an AER. So guess what? I was going on tour to Florida. I just bought the amp, had it delivered to my gig, and then I sent it to a friend in New York so that I have a separate amp stateside. I would say on an airplane, bring as little as possible because they will just try to charge you for everything. If it's your only carry on and it's small enough and it can fit in the overhead, then great. But I wouldn't deal with bringing an amp on a plane. The other thing is if, if you are like in the, in a country and you've got to take, for example, if you're in the United States and you were going to go to another location in the United States and you had to have your amp, I would pack it and ship it. I wouldn't bring it on the plane. Pack it, ship it ahead of time. David Allen. Oh man, I'd love to be part of your music wellness program and learn more about it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Steve Jones, I'm probably just talking to my higher self. Well, I, I hope I am. I hope I am. Edwin, hey, how you doing? Julian, yes, taking time off when frustration uh, sets in is a good thing to do. When you start getting frustrated, step away from the guitar and, you know, watch Family Guy or something, you know. Popper, you just played your first show and bombed. Oh, no. Your fingers were too nervous. How do you recover? Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to help you here. Okay. First of all, it probably wasn't as bad as you thought. Okay. We always think that, you know, a little mistake is perceived by others as a, a, a terrible mistake. It was probably pretty good. You know, imagine if you had something stuck between your teeth. For you, it's like your universe. You know, you're going crazy trying to get this thing out of between your teeth and nobody else knows about it, okay? Now, I'd love to see some videos from you if you wanna shoot me like a video. Uh, I would say, uh, keep going. 
Do that next performance and then do the next one after that and do the next one after that. Okay. When I started playing finger style shows, I was really nervous. I would sweat through shirts and it took me years to chill out. Uh, I get less nervous now. I get a little excited, but um, I feel pretty confident now, but it took me years. Okay. So you got to just, if you get knocked down, you got to come back. You got to, you got to diagnose the problem and see what was wrong and just keep coming back. It's like a boxer who gets knocked down. If you feel you got knocked down, keep getting back up. And I saw a question from Aaron Carlino in here, but I'm, I'm waiting through the, I'm going through the questions one at a time because I want to get to everybody. Okay. Hey, Varmego one, how you doing? Hey, Scooter Pilot one, I see you. Uh, Edwin N, you're saying it sounds like I addressed this. Do I recommend thumb picks? I don't recommend yes or no. I recommend that you get in touch with the sound that's when you make that sound, when you pluck the string, that inside you, there's something that just goes, yes. That's the important thing. Not whether you use a nail or a pick, but so that you go, yes, this is right. And you feel it in your guts. And for you, that might be a thumb pick. And so hone into your instincts. And it, whatever you're doing in your thumb should be something that you feel that you can play with confidence. Ooh, Nate, you took a message away. Okay, well, send me a private message. Vincent, can I tell you how I learned to play melody, bass, and the beat simultaneously? Uh, well, it came from a lot of years of playing jazz where I was just playing the melody as a jazz guitarist. And I did study some arranging and I did study some counterpoint. So Vin, Vincent, the, the important thing is to get the mental picture of what you want to achieve with a piece of music. Maybe even if you can jot it down on paper and also listening. You know, for example, if you listen to the Beatles, can you listen to a Beatles recording and say, what's going on in the bass? What's going on in the melody? What's going on in the middle? So that your mental picture is a top, middle, and bottom. Once you have the mental picture, it'll take some time, but it will eventually spill out onto the guitar. And also something like Mas Kanata, or Isn't She Lovely, which I've demonstrated here, I've played those thousands and thousands of times. So you're, you're seeing something that I've practiced. I, I can't just out of thin air play any solo arrangement on the guitar, okay? Hey, Chris, glad to see you. Oneness, oh, you want some beatbox? Well, maybe I'll do some at the end. Ah, Rafaf, what do I think about Leaving Neverland, the MJ documentary? Uh, good question. I'm concerned, man. I'm concerned about that. First of all, if he did what these guys are saying that he did, he sounds like he was a sexual predator. Now, I don't know if that's true. Okay, I don't know what's true. And of course, I don't want to believe that he is, but he might have been. Um, and it would be a terrible thing. And I, I don't know. It seems like these guys are telling the truth. But who knows? Who knows? The, the, the truth. I, I don't know. But it is a concern of mine, you know, like, are people going to be offended or hurt if I'm playing Billie Jean or I'll be there or one of those songs live? Because those are part of my repertoire. And I've, I've definitely thought about it. And I might just ask the audience at the show, I'm going to say, look, you know, this thing came out, but do you want to hear Billie Jean? You know, is it okay if I play it for you? Can we, can we separate the music from the person? I, I'm, I'm curious. I don't know how that's going to play out. Okay. I'm going to keep going here. Andy, how many guitars do I own and how many do I use? I own way too many guitars. And right now I'm just using three of them. I'm using my main Maiden, 
right? The one that you see in a lot of the video. Well, I'm using four of them, four. I have a backup Maton, same model, Michael Fix. I drag that everywhere. I never play it. It's just a backup in case something weird happens with this one. There's another guitar you see in some videos from a guy named Andre Kibben. Uh, it's, it's a sort of a, a guitar with no pick guard. It's a beautiful handmade steel string guitar. And I want to show everybody, I just got a really neat guitar from a guitar builder here in Europe named Daniel Zucali. This is a nylon string crossover model. So it's kind of like the mate and Michael Fix. It's got really low action, but it's nylon. And I'm not really great. Uh, my, I'm not plugged in. My nylon playing is not great. I'm not using fingernails. But once I get going, it, I can start to kind of get a sound. Oops, sorry about that. And it, it doesn't have the shimmer uh, that the steel string has, but it's got like kind of a jazzy kind of punch. So I'm, I'm fooling around with it. I'm experimenting. And maybe there's some nylon string uh, coming up in the future. I don't know. But his name is Daniel Zucali. Sorry, I'm just getting the carpet straight here. His name is Daniel Zucali, and he's always at the guitar festivals in Germany. And if you know anything about uh, German guitar companies, there's a company called Anika, and he was the head dude in the workshop overseeing the building of thousands of guitars. So he's on his own now. These guitars are masterpieces. So it's a little bit of a stretch for me as the steel string fingerstyle guy with no fingernails to play a nylon, but I'm, I'm fooling around with it. Okay, I'm going to keep going. Mito, you ordered the Stevie Wonder arrangements. Great. Uh, if anybody here has the DVDs uh, of Stevie Wonder, Jackson 5, you know, there's a download version. Just email me. I'll, I'll send you codes for the download version for free if you bought the DVD. So, Mito, I can, I can send you those downloads. All right, Nate, I see your answer here, man. Just, just reach out to me. W let's do a chat, you and me, because we've, we've talked in Ohio before, and I'm concerned about you, and I'm here for you. So we'll, we'll get it. let's get on a Skype call. Okay. Oneness, you're Japanese, but you love the tone of the acoustic guitar and, and beatbox. Okay, you're, you're pushing me with this beatbox thing. I guess this is a... I'm going to show everybody how I make the beatbox sound, and it sounds better on a, a real microphone. But the snare drum, you put the, the, the tongue up in the roof of your mouth, and I'm kind of sucking in on the sides. So probably doesn't sound like a bass drum on the on the webcam but <laughs> so I grew up on hip hop and I was in New York city when beatboxing started. So, you know, for me, it's, I fooled around with it so much as a kid. It's, it's just second nature. It takes a little work to coordinate it with the guitar playing, but it's, it's fun. And it's sort of on the edge of comedy and entertainment. So it's, it's cool to do in concerts. So, Whatever I, I maybe the bass drum sounded stupid here on the on the on the chat. Oop. Okay, let's keep going. <clears throat> let's keep going. Wow, lots of questions. I, I don't know if I'm going to get to everybody's questions. I'm going to go. I'm going to go over overtime because I'm having such a good time. I, I hope you are too. 
Um, hang on. Let's go back. I don't know if I'm going to get to everybody's question, but I'll really do my best. Okay. Ooh, St. Patrick, you're asking a very complicated question. St. Patrick is asking what chords to play or inversions to play over a chordal scale to practice fluidity. It sounds like you're searching for knowledge. Okay, it sounds like you're searching for knowledge. Here on YouTube, I have a little lesson called Intro to Harmony. It sounds like you need some basics with just being able to voice lead some triads. And if you don't know what voice leading is, check out the, the uh, lesson. It's also over on adamrafferty.com slash lessons, I believe, or if you go to free lessons on adamrafferty.com, it's totally free. Um, uh, do I see it there? I don't see it there. Oh gosh. Okay. Hmm. I think there's a lesson on YouTube that I did though called intro to harmony. Just, just check that out. It sounds like you need that. Okay. Okay. St. Patrick. Dennis Hooper's in the house. Hey Dennis, how you doing? What is the difference between standing and sitting when you are performing live? And do I have any more lessons in the pipeline? Okay, when I perform live, I stand. And that's because when I sit, my shoulders and hips get thrown off balance. You see, it's kind of like this. I can do it for a little while, but then eventually things don't start to feel so good. So when I stand, I'm kind of like, kind of like this. And the fact that I can walk around uh, helps. So I just practice like that as well, so that it's it's uh, so that I practice the same thing that I do when I perform live. Okay. And yes, I do have a lesson in the pipeline. Uh, I've got a little hang up. It's actually a theory lesson on some jazz harmony and how to apply it to the blues. That's going to be the next study with Adam Lesson. And my only hang up is I have an electric bass. It's in the shop and I want to do some nice backing tracks, but it's being repaired right now. But yes, I've been, I've been mapping out a new lesson and that will help uh, you and the others get a, a bluesy understanding of jazz chords without getting too intellectual. And it'll also help you build arrangements. Okay. Let's keep going on. Okay. What program is good to learn how to read music? TBR 9100. Um, I don't know if there's any software to learn how to read music, but I'll give you a secret to reading music. And that is uh, if, well, the very best thing you could do is go take some lessons at a local, with a local guitar teacher and deal with the unpleasantness and getting out of the comfort zone of reading music because there's a reward at the end of it. You'll be able to read through all kinds of jazz standards. You'll be able to play some music like Bach. You'll be exposed to so much. So, you know, it's a little unpleasant to learn how to read. It's just work and it puts you out of your comfort zone, but it's very rewarding once you can do it. So I would I would go get a teacher. I don't know any programs, computer programs that can do that. Okay. Sorry, Michael, you're not going to get my Kibben guitar. Hey, Bob Brownlee, I see you. How you doing? Hey, Omen Ranger, I see you. All right, Richie Ross, you're there. Or Turka. Richie, you asked me about the live setup. Okay, live sound setup. I'm gonna give it to you. I'm gonna give it to you straight. It's really simple. Okay, hang on. I'm gonna show you my pedal board, everybody. Don't go away. Oh, my pedal board isn't, isn't built up. Hang on.
Okay, so I was just on tour. Hang on, let me close that. Oh, the door's open. I was just on tour and I didn't want to travel with my whole pedal board. So what I did was I bought a doormat and I cut it and I just used a piece of like carpet with four boss pedals. Okay, hope they don't go crashing down. Hang on. A tuner, th that's a tuner. This is a Boss OC3 Octaver, where I can add an extra octave on the bass. This is a thing called Terra Echo, and this is a thing called Reverb, a thing called Reverb. Um, so, and the, the, the Octaver, this, I only use it on one song, Super Freak, that's it. And this, no, I only use it on one song, Super Freak. So like these, I barely even use. So for effect, I use tuner and reverb. That's it with the mate and guitar. That's all I use is tuner and reverb. And maybe on the ballads, the, the reverb, I use a slightly longer one. I use an, an AR or the Borgera amp. And I go DI out into the house. Okay. And I plug in. And I play Mas Canada. That's my sound check. I start with Mas Canada because that's usually my first tune of the night. And then I say to the sound man, can you hear everything? Can you hear the top? Can you hear the middle? Can you hear the bottom? And then we work from there. So it's a very simple live setup. I do have a requirement, though, uh, with the PA system. I say there has to be subwoofer bass speakers. Because things like beatbox and those low bass notes, I really want to have those frequencies. So I don't play real loud when I play live, but I need more than just the two boxes in the air. I need real, uh, real low uh, bass so it has that punch. So when I do that uh, bass drum on the beatbox, people feel it a little bit in their chest. Okay. I'm going to keep going. Sadie, when improvising, what modes or intervals do you recommend to create a darker emotional tone? Hmm, that's kind of... Um, when I'm improvising, I just think flow of melody and groove. And I'm a little reluctant to get into jazz improvisation questions here on this thread. That could get a little bit intellectual, but... Um, I, I'm, I don't really know how to answer that. I, I don't want to go deep into a jazz theory thing right now. That that might be good for another chit chat. Gibson or Fender depends on depends on the style. Give, depends on the style. Okay, Edwin, ciao. You got to go to work. Claudia, you like my Norwegian wood? Gosh, I haven't played that since I recorded it. Am I using a drop tuning? Yes, I'm using drop D and drop G. So it's like D, G, D, G, and then the rest of the strings normal. Stephen Wong, you showed your son, David, my videos. Cool. He plays with Russell Malone. I, I know Russell uh, personally. Yeah, I hope, I hope to meet him. I hope to meet him. Tom, I'd love to come back to Cass in Nashville, I'd love to come back. It's a little bit of a far distance. Okay, I'm, I'm trying to go through. I feel like I missed a question from Aaron. Ah, there's, there's your question. Okay, so everybody, why don't you hold off on any more questions so that way I can finish the thread of, of questions here and, and I won't leave anybody hanging because we're, we're into an hour right now and I, I want to get to everybody's questions. Oh gosh, I missed I missed a, a bunch. Oh gosh. Okay, hang on. What do I think of Loudon guitars? They're awesome. I love them. I don't have one. I would like to get one. They're great. What do I think about Lakewood and Taylor guitars? I think Lakewoods are great. I've never been in love with them, but I think they're really good, and I've played a few that I think are excellent. Um, I have two Taylor guitars, and I'll be honest, I don't like the pickups. I like the guitars, 
Um, sometimes the guitars are too shimmery and too bassy with not enough mids. Depends on the, the actual guitar and hunk of wood. But the ES system uh, proved to be problematic for me. Okay. Mike Chen, another study with Adam student is here. Hey, Mike, how you doing? Okay. Paul, uh, yes, a nylon string might be easier on your hands, but it might not. It uses different muscles. So for everybody here, if you're, if you're getting a new instrument or you're changing instruments, ease into it. A lot of hand injuries happen when, when you get a brand new instrument and you go gung-ho and some of the measurements or string tensions are a little bit different from what you're used to. So always go nice and easy. Tom Falk is in the house. Hey, Tom, how you doing? Okay, I'm going to get to your question. Sadie, she's asking, what are my thoughts on playing finger style on semi-hollow arch tops? I think any guitar can sound great. It depends on the sound that you are going for. There's a beautiful thing to a jazz guitar arch top with just a pure jazz sound. And I played one for over 20 years and I, I love that. Um, if that sound moves you, and if you're playing in a situation where that's right, then go for it. Uh, one of the reasons I play a steel string guitar is somehow it's kind of like a piano. And, and when I make it really loud, um, or like PA system loud, not really loud, but quite loud, I, I get such a different range of frequencies. You know, I get this real bass and I get these real high end sounds that almost sound like a hi-hat or like some percussive stuff. And I get these high frequencies. So I use the steel string because I find that it's the broadest sound of like a color palette that's kind of orchestral. Um, but for jazz and classical, sometimes that color palette should be reined in and it shouldn't get into all those highs and all those lows. And so nylon string guitars and jazz guitars are also beautiful. It depends on what you're playing and what the sound situation is in the situation that you're playing. Tears in Heaven, Nylon. I've thought about that one, Tim. I've thought about that one. Tom, Nails versus Bare Flesh. Um, I did talk about that before in, in the conversation. Um, there's a double combination. I'm just gonna say this real fast so I, so I don't, uh, so I don't go over the same ground. I find there to be an intimacy of the tone of the flesh. Although I love when people do fingernails and they do it well. I love the bell-like sound that people get. Uh, there's also a practical consideration is I don't break any nails. And that's just one thing to make my life simpler. Um, I'm... I'm the kind of guy, like when I go on video, you see me wearing these little sweatshirts and my hat and a t-shirt like this. I like to have just the thing that works. So I don't like changing guitars. I don't like messing with fingernails. I don't like messing my, with my equipment. And I don't like thinking about what I have to wear. So I try to keep things really simple and just work with those simple tools. It's not necessarily the most creative way, but it just, it keeps my life uh, simple. Always a teacher. Oh man, this is the best news of the night. You were diagnosed with stage four cancer and now you are cancer free. Oh man, that is awesome. That is awesome, awesome, awesome. That's the best news of the night, man. I'm so happy that you are still with us. We need you and your music, man. God bless you. Aaron, have I ever tried to make a guitar arrangement? Aaron's my buddy. He's a student on study with Adam and we're, we're good friends. He asks, have I ever tried to make a guitar arrangement that just didn't work out? Which tunes and why? Ooh. 
Well, let's, yes, that, that has happened. Let me see. I tried to do a sort of uh, thumb picking Tommy style version once of Copacabana. It was, it was up for a little while, the Barry Manilow song Copacabana. Cause I liked the texture of like all the, the fast thumb picking, but I, I kind of wanted to see if I wanted to see if I, if that could work. That didn't really stick. Um, I've done some original tunes where I started on the guitar and then the fingers were leading the way and the, the musical message got lost because I wasn't composing anymore. I was just letting my fingers lead the way. Those didn't work out. Um, but something I do want to point out is um, to Aaron, you know, we've talked about this because you've seen like I've, I've gone through some technique changes and it was one video you said, geez, how, how the hell can you play like that? I have one tune that I've struggled with for nine years that is finally getting into a, 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 a way that I can play it. And I'm going to try to play everybody. I might fall all over the place right now, but I'm going to just share with you like one of the crazy things that I practice. And this is a song called Brazil. And now technically I know that everybody says, you know, basically your thumb should be out. But if you look here on YouTube, there's a lot of lute videos where guys play like this on a lute. It's, it's insane. And I started noticing sometimes this works for me. Now, no, no guitar teacher in their right mind would ever tell you to do that. So this is the school position, right? Or if you're like a thumb picker like Tommy, like that. But somehow I can't get what I need musically from that position. So... This has to do with the arrangement. So in Brazil, there's this three part thing where it goes. Uh, I was ready to throw this arrangement out because my video, I, I can't stand either of my videos for this. And it's starting to finally come together. So there's there, that's the melody of Brazil. And then there's this inner line. So it's. Okay, so that's two lines. And then what I wanted was a. Like, like root to the fifth. And. With any other technique, I just couldn't get that. I mean, I had it for a little while with the thumb pick, but I couldn't get it. And now, I hope I can do it, it's finally starting to come together. It looks like this, with a little bit of this crazy loot thing. You got to make sure not to stick your wrist out too far, but it's kind of like, it's almost like doing like what the left hand does, you know? With the left hand's behind the neck, it's kind of like a similar thing, so... Again. Okay, that's not perfect, but uh, that was a tune that I was this close to throwing out. Okay, so there's something to be said for staying with the problem and and figuring out. Uh, solutions. I really struggled with, with that section of the tune. And I'm confident enough now that if I can play it for you after talking for, for 10 minutes, it'll be, it'll be okay live, but I'll see. I'll see. So, uh, but yeah, Aaron, there, there are tunes that just didn't work out. If you have a tune that doesn't work out, make it simpler. Okay. Just, just simplify, take things away, reduce it down to the basics and see if, by simplifying it, it makes it easier to play. Rock guitar power. Hey, man. 
what model maintenance do I play? That's a Michael Fix model, very similar to the Tommy model, but with a cutaway. I have a review of this guitar here on YouTube. You can just look, Adam Rafferty reviews the Maiton Michael Fix. Ah, what was the name of the AER like amp? I'm looking at John Roberts. I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put a link to the, um, I'm going to put a link to the amp. Now I don't know if um, I don't know if you. I'm going to put a, an American dealer, a Sweetwater. I like those guys. Okay, here's the link to the Bougier amp. Oops, no, that's not it. Hang on. Sorry, I copied too soon. Here we go. This is the amp, and it it really behaved like an AR. There it is. Bougera AC60. Tim Shaw. Hang on. Uh, let me let me go. Martin Learns Guitar. Hey, Adam, have I seen Sungha recently? And what do I think about him? You want to know what I think about Sungha? I think he's brilliant. And I wish I had the video. I was with him in Bangkok when he was still a little guy. And on my computer he was learning my video of Isn't She Lovely? And I saw his little brain at age 11 picking up, you know, my video. And despite what anybody thinks, I carry absolutely no ill feelings or, you know, people say, oh, his Billie Jean is so much more than yours, you know, so many more hits. I'm like, man, he's the best advertising in the world for me, you know, and he's always respectful and friendly and I think now he's playing his butt off. You know, when he was younger, it was like cool because he was young. That's not necessarily music I want to listen to. But his most recent Isn't She Lovely really knocked me out. I think he's a great player. And I'm curious to see him continue to develop. I haven't seen him in about nine years or ten years. So he's getting to be in his 20s now. But he's an extremely intelligent and talented and respectful young person who I really admire. Okay. Hang on. Tim Shaw, have I ever had issues with left hand fingers going numb, falling asleep? Uh, for playing for a long time. Okay, Tim, I've never had issues with fingers going to sleep uh, when I'm playing. But I did have a period a couple years ago because I, I try to meditate. I say I try to meditate every day, but I, I miss days. I had a thing where I was meditating, you know, and I'm holding my hands, you know. I would have my hands like this, actually. And I noticed uh, some tingling in my right hand. And very often, very often, that can come from neck and shoulders. And you're just feeling it here. But it can something to do with what's going on here. And I don't have great posture. So everybody, please check this next link that I'm gonna send you. There are a couple physiotherapy guys on YouTube who have saved me. Um, let me let me see if I can find their channel. Bob Brad Physio. Yeah, okay, their channel is simply called Physical therapy video. And this is something that I want to make people aware of. Okay, I just sent that link. These guys are funny and they have great videos. And one of the most important things, now I'm I've got a hunched back from years of playing like this. You see this? This is a forward head. And what you want to do is you want to do chin tucks. You want to get your ears over your shoulders. And you can do this even when you're driving a car. And something as simple as getting in the habit of doing that can actually have a big effect on everything that's coming down here. And if you're having some hand issues, that might be the cause. All of us are looking at computers. Like right now, I'm looking at a computer. My head is forward. We're looking at smartphones. Our head is forward. We're playing guitar. It's all this forward head. And that's going to be like an epidemic with young people who are like, little and doing smartphones. So that may be the issue. 
Even though you're feeling it here, it may be referred from what's going on here. Okay. Um, I'm going to keep going, but we're going to sign off in about 10 minutes, everybody. And if I don't get to your questions, I really, I really apologize because it's just, it looks like it's too much to answer. So why don't you hold off on any more questions? Um, Sadie, any question, any plans on creating a tab for Ain't Nobody? Probably, yes. Uh, if I do so, it'll be inside Study with Adam, and it will only be video instructions because I don't distribute tabs because I'm not allowed to do that. <clears throat> Okay. Do I write tabs for my arrangements? Sometimes I do if I need to drop a little bit of tab. This is Albert asking that. If I need to drop a little bit of tabs in the videos. But like I just said, um, distributing tabs is actually not legal, even though everybody does it. So since I've got a little bit of a name in the guitar world, I don't distribute any tabs that I don't have licensing for because that can get people in trouble. Okay. Miguel, you had asked me this before. How difficult is it for me to balance guitar study with personal life? And do I have any tips? Um, life balance is uh, for musicians is a very tricky issue, especially if you've got a family, especially if you've got to earn a living. I would say if you're at the point where you've got a family, that is now your first responsibility. And, uh, you know, your second responsibility is, is your music. And you've got to get very good at managing your time. Uh, when I was younger, uh, I never had any problems with drugs or alcohol, thank God. But I really didn't have my act together with relationships. And so that was, um, that was a, a tough point for me. I was in and out of relationships. I was married when I was 24 for a couple of years, which is, oh my, my God, 25 years ago or 26 years ago. Um, and so, you know, I, I kind of, I don't have kids. I kind of just did whatever I wanted in my personal life. But the, the work and life balance uh, is, is a tricky one. And so I would be very focused and I would set priorities and I would eliminate things that are not important. And I would set many goals. So, for example, if you've got a family and you've got stuff to do, you know, maybe you need to schedule a few short practice sessions in a week and make a goal of what you would like to achieve because you don't have, it sounds like you don't have endless hours to practice. Okay. Um, it's different for each of us, but take good care of your family. That's, that's really the deal. You know, I'm happy to say I've been with my girlfriend now for seven years and I'm starting to, uh, kind of understand relationships a little bit, uh, but it's, it's taken me a long time to become mature enough to do that. Okay, I'm going to keep going. Thank you, Luke. <laughs> I don't have an arrangement of as time goes by, Henry, uh, but stay posted. Um, do I have experience with the Taylor GS Mini? No, I don't, but it'd be great as a travel guitar. Uh, Kinderhouse, something about if my Facebook works or not. I'm, I don't quite understand the question. Uh, 15th fret, buying an acoustic guitar online. Uh, I would be careful buying an old guitar on eBay, like what you bought in 1980 Alvarez, but buying new guitars, you know, I, I feel new guitars are are pretty consistently made now. And any guitar I buy, I would go directly to my repair guy and have him do a setup. Okay, I'm getting to the end. Uh, Bye, Bye Zial, 
the tips on slap and playing notes simultaneously. You're asking like, like uh, so that it's, hang on, so that it's kind of like this. We're gonna end in, in a few minutes, everybody. Uh, Baziel is asking about this. So you get. Which it's it's hard to get that right. I haven't I haven't been playing that that kind of stuff, but I did a video on it, and it's right here on YouTube. So I'm going to put the the link. I think I called it Graffiti Groove Slap. Let me see. I'm going to put that link. Yeah, here we go. Hang on. Brief rundown. I'm going to send that to you. Okay, that's the Groove Slap lesson. So you can check that out, and, and that will explain exactly what I'm doing. Facebook doesn't work wor worldwide. Yeah, I, I had some trouble uh, with Facebook. <laughs> they're, they're going, maybe they're getting, I don't know if they're getting hacked, or I don't, I don't know what's going on. Okay, everybody. We're gonna, I'm going to sign off in two minutes. Um, if I can answer one last question or a couple last questions, just shoot and, and get them in there. Am I offering one-on-one -on -one lessons? AD asks. Um, currently, the only way you can get a one-on-one -on -one lesson with me is to come to a live workshop. But um, on Study with Adam, there's a there's a link uh, down down underneath the video. Studywithadam.com. You can send me videos of you playing. And I will send you a video reply. So that's about as good as I can do for a one-on-one -on -one lesson. But we can have a thread of sending videos back and forth, and I will give you <coughs> tips on your playing. Okay, I'm going to answer a couple more because because I'm I'm digging this. Um, thank you, everybody. Thank you. I see all the thanks coming in. And um, John Roberts, how do I pick a tune to learn? How does the power of the melody play into that decision? <clears throat> you answer the question. The tune has to touch me. The melody has to be great. Otherwise, I'm not going to learn it. <clears throat> All righty, everybody. I'm going to sign off. My throat's getting scratchy because I've been yapping here for one and a half hours. <clears throat> uh, I'm going to try to do this more often because it's as easy as clicking a button and just showing up for you. And I, I hope it wasn't too all over the road and too many different subjects, but it's my joy and my pleasure to be here for you and help you. If you have any questions, you can email me. My email is adam at adamrafferty.com. I answer all of my emails personally. It takes me like a couple hours during the day, but I will get back to you. I promise. Uh, hey, Chris, Oh, thanks for the plug. Chris, Chris loves study with Adam. He's one of my students there. Uh, one of the things I helped Chris with, uh, you, you see his name in the, in the, in the chat, Chris Kalafas. I, I got him into the right hand uh, motion, which you see me doing so that there's like a, a rhythmic framework. And he's been working on She Loves You. Oop, let me turn it up. He's been working on this one. Whoops, let me do it again. He's, he's been working on that one. And like, so he, here's an example of the kind of thing we work on with study with Adam. Like I, I noticed that Chris was, um, I hope you don't mind me saying this, Chris. Um, he was kind of doing the slaps, but he was avoiding playing melody notes where those things hit, like ba bum 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 boo chicka dunk. And so that was a thing, you know. I I saw his video, and I was able to coach him and and say, hey, how about can you play the chord like this? Can you do it right here? And it'll add another level of this sounding like the Beatles. And so that's the kind of personal coaching that, that we do on that I, that I offer on study with Adam in addition to the videoed lessons. 
Oh, cheer. Thanks. What's going on? That is on study with Adam, by the way, you can, you can uh, learn it there. So everybody, I'm going to hit the end stream button. I want to say, God bless. Send me an email, reach out. If you've got any questions, let me know. If you want really cool free lessons, just go to adamrafferty.com slash lessons. Uh, study with Adam has a free 14 day trial. If you want to check it out, you're not sure if it's, it's right. You can just check it out for free. It's no problem. Just reach out to me anytime and I will see you hopefully on the next live stream. And I look forward to connecting with you again very soon. All right. God bless.